I'm Diane Rogers and now I want to show you how to make some chicken marsala. We have some guests coming tonight. This is a really good do-ahead dish. It warms well and it's really easy to make. Um, first, starting with the chicken breast. Boneless, skinless chicken breast. Here's what I like to do. Is take the chicken breast and a sharp knife. You've got to have sharp knives. If you don't have sharp knives, talk to your local butcher. Maybe you can pay him to sharpen them. But anyway, take the chicken breast and with your hand flat, you've got to keep your hand flat or you'll slice your fingers off, especially with a sharp, well, hopefully not with a sharp knife. And then you just want to open this chicken breast up and cut it in half. Then what we're going to do to get a nice even thickness is put it together or put it in between two pieces of saran wrap or wax paper, something like that. And then with a meat pounder, or if you don't happen to have a meat pounder, use a bottle, use a wine bottle. Wine bottles work great. Just don't use your Chateau Lafitte. Could be a little pricey to screw that bottle of wine up. Anyway, then what you're gonna do is just pound these ever so slightly so that you have an even thickness on the chicken breast. And I'm gonna do the same with this one. And then what we're going to do is saute these. We're going to dredge them in a little bit of flour, seasoned flour, which is going to have just have just a little bit of salt and pepper in it. And then they're going to hit a pan, go into a pan over medium high heat with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. That's so that the chicken breast will take the heat and a little bit of butter. That is so that they will brown nicely and that adds a little bit of flavor. Now what we want to do into this all-purpose flour. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. We're going to put a little bit of salt. We're going to put a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. Actually quite a bit. I love pepper. It's great stuff. And then we're going to mix that up well. And then you can do this kind of in advance, not really too far in advance. But take your chicken and just ever so slightly dredge it. I have two pans in back of me that these are going to go into so it won't take too long. If you do these too far in advance, the flour will turn to glue for sure. So you have to do this flouring part last minute, but this will go together really quick. And because these are pounded on the thin side, they won't take more than a couple minutes on each side. So I'm going to make sure that I have a nice hot pan, and then I'm going to show you how to make a pan sauce out of that. Ooh, and Chloe's saying she wants some chicken marsala. Well, it just so happens that I have an extra piece cut for my little love muffin. She loves chicken, so she's patiently waiting. All right, so I will meet you at the stove and show you how I saute these and then how we're going to make the pan sauce. All right, here we are at the stove and chicken marsala. I'm going to put it in the pan. When it's done, I'm going to show you how to make the wonderful sauce. So what I have in the pan is a little bit of extra virgin olive oil that got a little bit hot. And to that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of butter in each pan. I am going to wait for this to melt a little bit and see how it's sizzling and melting really nicely and I'm doing this in two pans just to step up the process a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is put in chicken breast. I don't want to crowd the pans so I'm going to put them in so that they barely touch. You see how it sizzles really nice? You can't put this into as a matter of fact cold chicken. I'm going to put the heat up to almost high heat. I don't want this to cool down too much. And what you don't want to do is put the chicken into a cold pan. It will not work. So to get a nice color on it, um, this cooled down awfully quick. I've got these up on high heat now. And then I'm going to put some in the back. And we're going to give this just a couple of minutes on each side. And what I'm going to do is brown them nicely on top of the stove and I'm going to finish these in the oven. So I'm going to put them in an oven proof casserole 
after they get a little color on them on both sides and then they'll go into a 400 oven for about three or four minutes. So, uh, what I have ready for this sauce is a little chicken stock, some chopped sage, some shallots, some mushrooms, and I am using some marsala. And then we'll finish this sauce after it reduces, and I have everything off the bottom. Uh, we'll finish it with a little butter to emulsify it. Right, these are looking quite nice. They have a little gold brown uh, color on them. They're about 90% done. So what I'm going to do is overlap them just slightly in my um, big pan. This will also serve as my serving piece. These are looking great. They're smelling really nice too. What the flour does on a chicken breast is it will help to thicken the sauce ever so slightly. I'm not trying to make a really thick gravy, I'm just trying to make a really nice pan sauce. And what's left of the flour in the pan will help that, and what's on the chicken will help thicken that quite a bit. I'm going to spread these out a little bit, put another one in that pan. Okay, so now that the chicken is done, what I'm going to do is add to the pan I'm going to utilize both pans because I don't want to waste any of the brown bits off the bottom. So I'm going to put half my shallots in the back pan and the other half in the front pan. And at the same time, I am going to put half the mushrooms in the front pan. All right, so I have the mushrooms in the pan. And I added just a little bit more butter because the mushrooms, acting like sponges, sucked up the little bit of uh, olive oil and butter that was left in the pan. And I want these nice and brown, so these are back up to high. They're browning nicely. And I was going to add a little bit of olive oil, but I really don't have to. So we're going to flip these around. These are looking great. Oops. Oh, these are looking wonderful. Alright, now what I want to do is now that these are nicely brown, I want to deglaze this pan with a little marsala. You can buy sweet marsala and you can buy dry marsala. For savory dishes I use dry. For sweet dishes like Zabioni and stuff like that, I use uh, the sweet. Now, what you want to do, this is really important if you don't want to burn your house down, alcohol, it will flame. What I like to do, especially because I have gas burners, is I am going to add this Marsala off the flame, swirl it around for a little bit, and hopefully get that alcohol, just a little bit of it, to burn off before I put it back down. And I'm going to do the same with the back pan. If you put this right on the burner, I guarantee it will flame up. And the flame could go into your hood and it could be a whole difference. You could be eating out rather than dining in, if you know what I mean, at the fire department. So anyway, um, now, that's back on, and I'm going to reduce that slightly. And what I'm going to add to this is, because I want the flavors to pick up, a little bit of sage, chopped sage. This is fresh sage. Don't use dried rub sage that you buy in the grocery store. Get some fresh and chop it up. It's a lot better. That dry rub sage is weird. It's like a powder. It's, I don't know. I personally don't like it. Now. What I'm also going to do is combine these two pans and turn my back pan off and let this reduce down a little bit. It's looking good. Everybody loves sauce, so I always make quite a bit extra. And then what I'm going to do is you can see that this is starting to thicken just ever so slightly. Not a lot, but the flour helped that thicken. 
It's not quite like water, and it's just a step under heavy cream. Then, after that, we're going to add some chicken stock to the pan, a cup or two, and we'll keep that on high heat to reduce it. And also what we want to do, that we could do at this point, is to taste adjust it. It's probably going to need a little bit of salt and pepper, is my guess. And it does, for sure, but it's tasting pretty good. And so, I'm going to add, whoops, that's a little too much, a pinch of salt and some fresh cracked pepper. Actually, quite a bit of pepper. I love my pepper, if you've heard me say. And then, we'll swirl this around a little bit and mix it. And I'm going to taste it again. Ah, perfect. That one's on. So we're going to reduce this just a little bit because I want it just a little bit thicker. Not a lot, but just a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to finish this with a tablespoon of butter. Actually, it'll probably be two tablespoons. The butter is going to make it just a little bit creamier and it's going to make it just a little bit more emulsified without turning it into a gravy. And I'm going to add the butter. It is nice cold butter, which is uh, nice to use because that will help emulsify this a bit, just being cold. And add it in smaller pieces as opposed to one huge chunk. And then we're going to swirl that around. And what I'm going to do is finish this with a little bit of fresh chopped parsley just before I serve it, just to add a little fresh color. But you can see now we have plenty of sauce for sure, and it's thickened to a nice pan sauce. The flour from the chicken breast will thicken that just ever a little bit more. So this is going to go into the oven, into a 400 oven, for about five, seven minutes tops, because these, like I say, are about 90, 95% done. And then they'll come out of the oven and it's time to serve. What you would want to do if you, if you wanted to make this in advance, like you can do this the day before, then what you would want to do is take it this far and put the sauce on the side and put your chicken breast on the side. Warm the sauce, warm the chicken breast, and then just before you serve, put the sauce on the chicken breast. And that's how you can do it in advance for a party and get it done the day before. All right, so I'll pour, actually, I'm going to pour this now over. The chicken, I'm gonna observe a little bit on the side too because everybody loves the stuff and by keeping a little bit on the side uh, that will give everybody an extra spoonful after they serve themselves. All right, so this will go into the oven and then before we serve it, I'll show you what it's gonna look like. Actually, I'll show you what the whole dinner's gonna look like. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, we're here with dinner. It's time to eat for sure, definitely. <laughs> but we're sure having fun. Anyway, I made some polenta with some Parmesan Reggiano on top, the chicken marsala. I made a salad with port wine vinegar and some extra virgin olive oil. That should be good. Some garlic, it's wonderful. A little extra sauce and some green beans and sweet peppers with garlic. So this should be a pretty good dinner. And then we'll come back after this course and have some creme brulee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah.